Two actresses fresh to the cinematic scene were impressive in two completely different genres, in Rebel Wilson and Britt Marling. Wilson was funny in What to Expect When You're Expecting, but was even better in the underrated Pitch Perfect. As Fat Amy, Wilson turned in a female comedic performance worthy of mention with other comedic heavyweights like John Belushi and Chris Farley. Playing off her large frame, Wilson uses her sassiness and spunk for laughs and a touch of sweetness to win over your heart. Unlike other big female comedians, Wilson found humor in her personality, not her attitude. Marling was equally impressive with dramatic turns in arbitrage and the less heralded sound of my voice. Her outward demeanor is of dead calm, but the intelligent and calculating nature of her characters can be viewed through her determined and impassioned eyes. As Maggie in Sound of My Voice, she creates a mysterious, intriguing, and intimidating figure in spite of her character's physical limitations. Jennifer Lawrence's big film of 2012 may have been The Hunger Games, but her turn in Silver Linings Playbook was her brightest moment. Lawrence's Tiffany is a tightrope act that the 22-year-old expertly balances. Tiffany is brash, funny, dramatic, depressed, and uniquely wise in some aspects, and Lawrence sells us on each of these facets. Her performance almost compensates for the mixed message film and upstages a strong cast featuring Robert De Niro, Bradley Cooper, and Jackie Weaver. Lawrence is impressed in each of her works, but none more moving than Tiffany in Silver Linings Playbook. An unheralded but sneaky performance from 2012 came from the overlooked film Premium Rush. Michael Shannon, who wowed in last year's Take Shelter, again brings an odd sensibility to Bobby Monday, a gambling-addicted New York cop. Monday is a crazy and humor-filled loose cannon, and Shannon creates a memorable character who is equally funny and menacing. 2012 was a terrific year for the animated genre. Although none cracked my top 10, there were more memorable animated films last year than in recent memory. Wreck-It Ralph, The Secret World of Arietti, Paranorman, Frank and Weenie, The Pirates Band of Misfits, Madagascar 3 Europe's Most Wanted, Rise of the Guardians, and Brave all succeeded in delivering terrific children's fables while also providing a unique aesthetic. As a parent of a kindergartner, it was refreshing to watch several films that not only she, but I could appreciate. Although the screenplay didn't move me in Cloud Atlas, the score, composed by Reinhold Hale, Johnny Klemek, and Tom Twyker, lifted the otherwise lumbering and uneven film. The hauntingly simplistic music created an undercurrent of importance, regardless of the various plot's effectiveness, and left me with the lone music score nominee on our local critics' awards ballot. Other film scores were worthy as they played out during the film, but none stuck me like the lasting sounds of Cloud Atlas. The best documentary of the year, The Queen of Versailles, seemed to mark the times. With America struggling economically, due in large part to our poor spending habits, whether on Main Street, Wall Street, or Washington, D.C., The Queen of Versailles showed that these habits also occurred in sunny Florida with the Siegel family. As successful as Western Resort's owner Jerry Siegel was at making money, his wife Jackie, an ex-beauty queen, was equally successful at spending it. With plenty of mouths to feed and in the midst of the Great Recession, the Seagulls become financially challenged to make ends meet and have to exercise some fiscal restraint. Director Lauren Greenfield expertly allows the events and participants' actions to tell the story without any unnecessary commentary or politicking. And finally, my 21st favorite film of the year, or the one which fell just outside of my top 10 and honorable mentions list, was the horror film The Cabin in the Woods. Writer-director Drew Goddard and co-scribe Josh Whedon concocted a horror film that both honors and tears down conventions of the genre. With a cast in classic horror mode, the film proceeds in standard fashion until the film's latter third, when Goddard and Whedon's imaginations run wild. The Cabin in the Woods also features my favorite scene of the year, a monster mash that could never be forgotten.